The easiest thing I've done was to get out from under the labels and to live the life that I live. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do it. We might not get everything that we fight for, but everything we get, it will be a fight. Life is a fight for territory, and once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. When something happens to you, you don't deny it, you defy it. And I was defiant that I'm going to beat this, I'm going to handle this, that there are people who many times when something happens to them, that they embrace it from a place of fear and it takes them out. And that things may happen to you and things may happen around you, but the most important things are the things that happen in you. And you have to stand up inside yourself and deal with it and handle it. When you go through some stuff, you tell there's some certain things that you don't want ever to see again, and that's what I don't want to ever see again. But fear has not been the biggest challenge that I've faced with the things that I've been dealing with. And when you don't know what's impacting you, and it's, it's something that, that's holding you down and you're not aware of it. You live in a dominant culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self and your belief in yourself. And, and you have to learn ways in which you can begin to connect with this power that you have within yourself to handle where you are. The key is to be constantly in a perpetual process of discovering the truth of who you are and fighting constantly to look for ways in which you can escape the inner conversation. There's, a, there's an objective that you want to achieve. How people live their lives as a result of the story they believe about themselves. That life is an adventure and it's going to be a challenge and get ready to, because you're going to fail your way to success. You're going to get slapped around by life. And don't spend time complaining about it and telling everybody 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. Because <laughs> life is, is going to beat up on you in so many ways. And many things, they come back. You know, negative thoughts and, and how you feel about yourself, they don't die. They, they come back once you stop doing the maintenance work on your mind, listening to motivational messages, going to seminars and workshops, spending time quietly listening to the still small voice within. Uh, who am I really? Is this really me? Am I giving my best? Uh, am I just reflecting what's around me? Because all of these various things affect how we show up in life. And so having a strategy to continuously uh, find ourselves reaching higher. The impulse to dream has slowly been beaten out of me through the experiences of life. So when you live in a culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self, to, where you are marginalized, where you, you have a feeling of being hopeless and powerless, and you're terrorized. Now you have to operate within the constraints of, of the dominant society and the things that they've created for you. And it's a challenge to see yourself beyond that and to work to get outside of that. They are not making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to think outside of what life has thrown at them. They end up doing the same thing over and over and over again. Thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. And so through relationships, through reading, through studies, through goals and dreams beyond your comfort zone, it allows you to begin to live out of your imagination. A gentleman who dramatically transformed my life, I was a junior at Booger T. Washington High School in Miami, Florida. And I went in his class looking for another friend. And, and he said, go to the board and work this problem out for me. I said, sir, I can't do that. He said, why not? I said, uh, I'm not one of your students. He said, do it anyhow. And, and the other kids started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's DT. And he said, what's DT? He's, his brother is smart, but he's the dumb twin. And, and I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk and he pointed at me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And he taught me three things. He said, if you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. 
He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. I found that out. I left all my bro broke friends. I said, y'all gotta go. Because <laughs> I used to be so broke, I'd pass the bank and trip the alarm, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and the third thing he said, develop your communication skills. Because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. He said, those are three major things that you want to work on that will liberate you from living in Liberty City, living in poverty and over town. It will help to escape out of where you are right now because I see you watching me and I know you want more. I can see the hunger in your eyes. That's why my book is about to come out called, You Gotta Be Hungry. <laughs> you get hungry by finding something that's you. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You've got to find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. Uh, one of the things that I realized and what allowed me to become successful as a speaker, the speaking industry has been hijacked by people who speak to sell, and it's, it's okay to do that and make money. I speak to change lives because somebody spoke and change my life. So this is my passion. This is my drive. This is something that I feel in my heart. And, and so the key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. I didn't do what I'm doing for years because of my programming, because of the culture in which I was raised in. I would see other people with with degrees and PhDs and, and MBAs and credentials I don't have, and I convinced myself I couldn't do it. But Mr. Washington, on that day, we became friends, and, and he taught me not only someone's opinion of you does, does not have to determine your reality, he said that you have to work on yourself and you have to have an unstoppable attitude and no excuse is acceptable and you've got to, to make it a, a, a priority, a non-negotiable in your life and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished and go all out. Find a way to win in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people when I'm giving presentations, you will fail your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Those experiences of, of going after goals that's beyond your comfort zone and having relationships that will challenge you and surrounding yourself with coaches and mentors who can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself because you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. And so those experiences, they challenge you to go to that next level and continue to move forward in your life doing new and exciting things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you live a hard-centered life, deciding that you're gonna live a life that will outlive you. You're gonna live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet. You know, Horace Mann said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. Get to know yourself that I, I believe that we're taught, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, is because... What does that mean? Like, that sounds slick as hell, but I don't actually understand. I know it. What it means is that don't live the life that has been given you. By the circumstances, by the people that's around you, is that either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? And so there are things that we pick up and we think that they're our choices, but they're the choices that we've been programmed by life to, to do. I mean, we, when we leave our homes in the morning, we're bombarded with over 6,000 advertising hits 
through Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram, through television, through our phones and through our communities uh, and through the computers. And so all of these things are impacting us every day. So if you don't have a program for your mind, then your mind is going to be programmed and you'll find yourself doing things that you did not know. Well, you've you got are. to get to know yourself. You want to spend time reading. Uh, reading is very important. One of the books I enjoy is by my mentor, Mike Williams. He saw this Les Brown before I saw him. I was a disc jockey at WVKO radio station in Columbus, Ohio. And he said, hey, Brownie. I said, yes. He said, you know why you go see Robert Schuller and, and Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar? I said, because I like their message. He says, no. He said, that's who you are, man. You can do that. And he said, you know why Bert Charles gives you so much hell here? I said, well, he just doesn't like me? No, because you've outgrown this place. There's something else for you to do. You can do what those guys do. But at that time, I was suffering from possibility blindness. I couldn't see it. I had the, the conversation in my head of, of being labeled educable mentally retarded and, and failing twice in school. But over the years, experiences continue to peel away and you wax a floor. You don't put wax on the existing floor. You, you strip it first. And so over the years, the seminars, the workshops, the examples, the things that I observed, like people like yourself, begin to peel away and penetrate and connect with that part of myself that says, I can do this, I can do more, and I deserve more. And, and so I would teach my kids that you have to transform your mindset, you have to continuously upgrade your relationships. My youngest son, John Leslie, poses a question. He said, when you have goals and dreams you want to achieve, he said, ask yourself the question, who should I count on and who should I count out? And so many people never achieve their goals because they have too many toxic, negative, energy draining people in their lives. And you have to have goals outside of your comfort zone that will challenge you because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. And you've got to have a mentor who's experienced, who, who's been there, done that. And, and as a result of that relationship, because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, Muhammad Ali said, I'm the greatest, but he never won a championship without Angelo Dundee. And Michael Jordan never won a championship without Phil Jackson. So you've got to have someone that can see something in you that you can't see. The secret of the age is that you have the power to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Don't underestimate yourself. You don't know enough about yourself to become a cynic. And so you've got to challenge yourself to access that power that you have within you. You're more than a conqueror. Focus on the value of not only just changing your mind, but having a program to do maintenance work on your mind because those negative thoughts will come back with a vengeance. Once you stop the ritual of whatever you're doing, that will hold those negative thoughts in check. Negative thoughts are like weeds. You can't kill weeds. You can, you can hold them down for a minute. But once you stop doing the things to overpower those negative thoughts, focus on how to begin to get under those conscious thoughts and impact that subconscious mind to create an ongoing process of renewing how we see ourselves. Every day when I get up, I, I read. I, I get up and there's a, there's a scripture I love because all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And so I meditate on that and I visualize myself doing some good stuff in the planet. Uh, you have to have a program that will increase your sense of self, reading, doing good work, uh, volunteering, constantly looking for ways in which you can improve all the dimensions of your life, being a better father, being a better husband, a wife, or being a better person, because we want to have a holistic approach to life. Because if your achievements outgrow your sense of self, you will unconsciously engage in self-destructive behavior. And we're witnessing that now on a national level. Whenever I go after a goal, even though 
I don't have the money, even though I don't have the resources, uh, even though I don't have the connections. Uh, I remember sending up one of my messages to Gunther Ranker, who had a commercial for Tony Robbins' personal power every 30 minutes on television. So I sent them one of my motivational cassette tapes at that time. And, and they sent me a letter back and said, you got an inspiring story, but you're black. And I, I wrote back and said, thank you for telling me. I never would have known that had you not reminded me. <laughs> so, and I, at the end of it, I wrote, I'll see you from the top. <laughs> okay. And, and, and so Mike Williams, my mentor said, Brownie, never let what you want to say get in the way of what your audience wants to hear. Conduct communications intelligence. Ask them, listen to what they're telling you and then craft and create a story out of your experiences and things you've observed and learned to begin to allow them to see a vision of themselves differently than what they had when you came in. Orchestrate an experience. That experience is major. If if information could change people, everybody would be skinny, rich, and happy. I aspire to inspire until I expire.